Hey, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install macOS Catalina on VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. So to get started, we're gonna go over some system requirements. We're gonna list out a few things that you're gonna need here. First, we're gonna need Windows 10. Uh, we're gonna need a PC with at least six gigs of RAM. Eight is gonna be best. Hard disk space, we need at least 60 gigs of free space, but 80 is gonna do you better. We're gonna need to download the VirtualBox and extension pack the macOS Catalina file, the command file, and the screen resolution file. Now the command file is there to adjust settings to make sure that we can install it because by default you won't be able to install macOS. And the resolution file is there so we can have full screen capabilities. Getting the ISO files may not be the easiest thing, so we're not gonna leave you high and dry. In the description below, we're gonna have links to all the files that we've mentioned uh, for quick and easy access. And also we're gonna be putting in timestamps in the description. For example, if you've already installed VirtualBox, you'll be able just to skip ahead of that part and jump onto the next step, which is installing macOS Catalina. As you know, not every installation goes through smoothly, whether you're using an AMD chip or an Intel chip, there's various different problems that can come up. We've created a forum in our website, which is forum.geekrar.com, where we're answering a lot of questions, posting files and solutions. Uh, so once again, that's forum.geekrar.com. You can head over there if you're having problems. Okay, and with that out of the way, let's get started with the installation. So if you haven't already installed VirtualBox, we'll quickly run through the setup right now. But if you need a detailed guide, you can either click up here for this or check the link in the description. All right, so we're gonna open up our browser. We're gonna go to the VirtualBox website and we're gonna download the version for Windows. We're also gonna grab the extension pack, click on them both. And once we have it downloaded, we're gonna install them. So at the prompt, you can just click on next all the way through by keeping all default directories and shortcuts. We'll click on next, click on install and allow it to continue. And then when it's done, click on finish. Now over here at the VirtualBox manager, we're gonna click on preferences. And then on the left-hand side, we're gonna click on extensions, click on the plus, and then we just need to add our download of extension pack. Click on install, scroll down and then select I agree. Click yes to the prompt and the installation is complete. Click okay and okay and we're done installing VirtualBox. Now to get started, we have to make sure that we have two files available for this installation. The first one is gonna be the VirtualBox command file. Uh, this is to make sure that we're able to install Catalina on VirtualBox. Without these commands entered, you will not be able to successfully install it. This is going to manipulate it to change uh, some read-write permissions and make sure that we can actually install the operating system in VirtualBox. The second file is going to be the resolution file. And well, the reason why we want to run these commands is to allow it to go to a larger screen resolution. By default, I believe it's 1064 by 728. Uh, we want to make sure that we can actually go to 720p or 1080p uh, and then go full screen. So we need those two files handy and now we can start installing the operating system. So we're going to open up VirtualBox and then click on new. We're going to click on expert mode. I'm going to type in Catalina here. Machine folder can stay as default. We're not going to be changing anything here. Uh, type, we're going to make sure that we have Mac OS X selected. And then we also want to make sure that the version is 64 bit. Okay, so below in the memory, you want to make sure you have 50% of your system's RAM available. So we're going to go about halfway. That's going to be pretty good right here. And then below, uh, we want to make sure that we're selecting to create a new virtual disk and then click on the create button and inside here. So we're going to leave the folder as is. We're not changing anything here. We want to make sure that we give it enough disk drive capacity. We're going to be putting in 60 gigs. 100 gigs is best. Because we have limited space, we're going to do 60. We're selecting VMKD, dynamically allocated, and then click on create. Now in the window here, we're going to go into settings and we're going to make some modifications. So inside settings, we're going to be clicking on the system tab. Inside system, we're going to go on the motherboard tab. And then below in the chipset, we want to make sure that we have PII X3 selected. And then we're going to go to the processors tab. 
and we want to make sure we're using about 50% again of the operating system power there. So that for us, it's four CPUs. And then we're going to go to display. We're going to max this all the way out to 128 megs. Then down to graphics controller and we're going to select VMS VGA. And then under storage, we want to make sure that we select the empty disk drive here below. And then choose a disk file and then locate your ISO image. So we have it right here and then click on open and then click on the controller stata and we want to click on the plus sign here, click on add hard drive. So click on add and then we can find the virtual box boot image file here that we've already downloaded it's in our downloads folder. Okay. So here's the virtual box boot image file. We want to select that and then click on open, click. Okay. Click on choose. And one more last thing we want to make sure under USB, we select here USB 3.0. We're going to select that right now. A lot of people are having better uh, results with USB 3.0. If you find that your mouse is a little bit laggy, you can switch it back to USB 2.0. So we're going to shut down VirtualBox completely, close it out. We're going to go back into our downloads folder here. And now we're going to be running the VirtualBox command files. So as you remember earlier, I made sure that uh, we had these available. So we're going to open up the command prompt. You want to right click on it and run as administrator. Click yes to the prompt. Inside the command prompt window, we're going to go back over here and we're going to replace the VBox name. Okay. So the VBox name here is just, it's a temporary placeholder. We want to actually change it to the name of the virtual box name that we've provided. So we'll take virtual box name, go to edit, replace in the VBox name to find, we're going to put in VBox name and then replace with Catalina. And then we can click on replace all. It's going to make the updated changes that we want for running it. And then we're going to highlight the first line which is the first command line, it's going to change the directory to the default directory where VirtualBox is installed. So we're going to highlight it, copy it, and then we can paste it in, hit enter. And then you can see now that our directory has changed to the VirtualBox directory. And now we can copy these lines in, copy them, switch back over and paste the commands and then hit enter. And those have been executed. So we're good right now. We should be able to install the Catalina operating system inside VirtualBox. So we can go ahead and continue with the installation. We're going to now launch the VirtualBox manager so we can begin the setup of the operating system. So we have op opened it up. We want to make sure that the virtual machine is selected and then click on start. So now the VirtualBox is going to begin. And as it rolls up, you'll see a bunch of text rolling up through the screen. And this is completely normal. So we're prompted for language. We're going to select English and then we're going to click on the continue button at the bottom. And now we want to prepare the drive for the operating system. So we have selected disk utility and we click on continue. And now we're selecting VBox hard disk, which is the first option on the top left hand side, our internal drive. We're going to select it and then we're going to click the erase icon at the top. And for the name, you can give it any name that you want. So we'll just put in a name here and then click on erase. And now it's going to begin to erase the drive and format it. Once this is done, we can click on done and then we can close out of the disk utility window. Back at the Mac OS utilities window, we can now install Mac OS by selecting it and clicking on continue. At the first welcome screen that we have, we can just click on continue for next, and then we'll get an agreement here, uh, which you can scroll through. You have to agree to it if you want to have this installed. So we can click on agree. And then again, at the top, we can click on agree. So now the drive that we have just formatted is here to select. We can click on that and then click on install. Depending on how much RAM, CPU, and disk space has been allocated, it will vary on how long it'll take to copy over files. So we'll just skip through this part. Once it's done copying files, it'll automatically reboot the system into the next phase. So now we're just gonna select the country that we're installing it for. 
and I'll be selecting the United States here. And once it's selected, you can click on continue. And then by default, it's selecting preferred language and input sources for United States. I'm going to leave them as that and click on continue. If you do want to change it, you can click on customize settings. For privacy and data, you can click on learn more or click on continue. Now, if you have an existing setup, you can automatically transfer those files over. I don't recommend this. But what we're going to do right now for this installation is do not transfer any information right now and click on continue. Here you can sign in with your Apple ID. Uh, we're skipping this part for the installation, so we're going to click on Setup Later. And to validate our choice, we just click on Skip. Here we have the terms and conditions for the operating system. What you do need to do in order to continue is to agree to the terms and conditions. So you can scroll all the way down through them and then click on Agree. And you'll get a second prompt. We can click on I Agree. And to create an account for the computer, we're going to require a full name. So you're going to type in your name and you're also going to give it a password. Click on continue. In the express setup, which is what we're doing right now, we can just click on continue. If you want to customize settings, you can also click on the link to do so. Analytics, we're not making any modifications here. We're leaving it as default and we'll click on continue. Screen time as well, we're leaving it as default. You can always set this up later. We're going to click on continue. Next, we have Siri. I'm not a big fan of Siri, so I'm turning it off. This is up to you. It's a personal choice. Uh, select your option and then click on continue. So next you get to choose your desktop interface if you want to go light mode or dark mode. And now it's setting it up and we've completed the setup. So here we are at the Cantalina desktop. Um, there's some updates that have to happen. But the first thing you're going to notice is that the screen size, we're not filling up the screen uh, that most people would prefer. So we actually do want to go into full screen mode. Uh, that is going to be the last text file that we have. Uh, we're going to run some commands and I'll show you how to do that. So when we go into the operating system and we load this up, it's automatically going to be in full screen mode. So we'll do that right now real quickly for you. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to shut down the virtual box. So we're heading over to our command files. We're opening up the screen resolution file and we're gonna go back into the command prompt. So in here, we wanna make sure that we're changing the virtual box name to the one that we're using, which is Cantalina. And I'm gonna be using 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p. So the placeholder of the X, we're gonna replace right now by pasting that in there. And then we're gonna open up a command prompt. So again, when we open up the command prompt, we wanna make sure we open it as administrator and say yes to the prompt. And then we can copy and paste the two lines that we need for this. So the first one is to change the directory. So we're in the VirtualBox directory. So we'll copy and paste it in, hit enter. And there we go, we're in the right directory now. And here is the screen resolution that we want to change it to. We're going to copy this line, paste it in the command prompt, hit enter. And there we go, now we're done. So that's it, quick and easy. Uh, we're gonna boot back up our virtual machine now and it should load into full screen. We're going back into the operating system and right off the bat, as soon as it loads, you can see it's already trying to maximize the screen size. Once we load into it, we can actually do a full screen. Great, here we are at the login screen uh, where we just have to click on the username. Okay, so now we've entered in full screen mode. You can see that everything is filled up and we're at the desktop and there we go. So we have Catalina on a Windows 10 PC running on VirtualBox in full screen mode. These installations are not always easy. There's always some issues that come up. Uh, the forum that we have running on GeekWire is pretty helpful. If you have any questions, post a lot of solutions there as well. So that website is forum.geekwire.com. You can head over there and uh, post any questions that you might have, or you can put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. So that is how you install Catalina on VirtualBox in a Windows 10 PC. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.